What to do, everybody? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Hey. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I know what you're thinking. Wavy, what the f***, man? You got on a little red hat. I don't. I have a gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding you, I don't have a growth. This is a hat. Uh, it's a, called a beret. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, was, I, I went to France where the naked lady... <laughs> I went to France and I got myself a beret. A lot of, a lot of the French people said to me when I was in Paris, they said, Zutala, you crocodile! <laughs> Oh, no! It must have escaped from the zoo. I was like, chill, everybody. I'm American. It's all right now. I don't have to worry about the Nazis no more. Wave is here, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Who needs chewing gum and nylons? And they were like, that was over 60 years ago, you insensitive reptile. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, Wavy, you're pretty good at that French accent there, buddy. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. Starting Monday, we're going to show all the shows that we did in France. And I, wait, 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 don't, don't applaud. You haven't seen them yet. They could be <laughs> The hell is wrong with you? Try and have a little bit of anticipation. You could be like, okay, well, we'll wait and see and we'll reserve judgment at which time we will let you know whether we enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it. You don't just go, oh, woohoo, woohoo, great. Now we're going to see more free TV. Be honest, does this barrette look like a growth? Yeah, I, I'm going to have it removed. Uh, hold on. I wish, I wish my hat could be removed. Right away. <laughs> ow, 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 no, ow, 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 get away from me, man. Oh. It seems to be sewn onto my head. <laughs> I will try and have it removed at a later date. Sponsored by Denny's. America's Diner is always open. anymore because it has gone. <laughs> gone like the phantom that it was. It was the ghost of an applause. It was just like a wispy farty piece of applause. <laughs> yeah, wispy farty. It's uh, Wispy farty is the name of the children's book that I'm going to write. <laughs> wispy farty lived by Dingley Dell.
it's a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is Friday, of course. Thank the Lord it's Friday. What a week it's been, although it seems to have gone by quite quickly. I, uh... <laughs> Greg, are you implying that your show may have been pre-taped? Oh, you mean like every other late night show? <laughs> oh, you mean they're not live too? No, they're not live. <laughs> Live. I think David Lerman stays up late. He doesn't stay up late. <laughs> well, he might stay up late, but he doesn't. He doesn't work late. He doesn't have to work late. Jay Leno doesn't work late. Conan O'Brien doesn't work late. Only me. <laughs> Cinderella stuck here after they all the rest have gone home, sweeping up the dusty, farty wispies. <laughs> I better press on, shall I? <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's Friday. Oh, I know what. The, you know the producers of the movie Black Swan are making a movie about those Chilean miners. I don't, I don't care about if the movie's about 33 men stuck in a mine. They better have a lesbian scene in it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> stuck down the mine. Why, this reminds me of the time that... Uh, <laughs> Big movie out today I'm very excited about. Cowboys and aliens. It's about cowboys and aliens. <laughs> Which is a crazy concept for a Western. I wonder what John Wayne would have say, said if he was asked to be in this movie. He'd have said, I'll do it. It sounds like fun. <laughs> Greg, that's not John Wayne. It's Michael Caine. I don't want to do John Wayne. I do Michael Caine. <laughs> anyway, if Cowboys and Aliens is successful, they'll start mixing it with other, you know, uh, genres. There'll be westerns mixed with other genres. There'll be uh, cowboys and sharks, cowboys and <laughs> cowboys and vampires with sexy abs, <laughs> cowboys and Tyler Perry in a fat suit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited because I love cowboy movies and I love alien movies. And the last time I combined two things that I loved like this is when I uh, curled up with a six pack of eclairs and watched Glee. <laughs> <laughs> the title of the movie is vague though, you know, cowboys and aliens. Are we talking violent aliens like Independence Day aliens or friendly aliens like in E.T.? Are we talking violent cowboys like in The Unforgiven or friendly cowboys like uh, the Brokeback Mountain? Or what? <laughs> Please be the second one, please be the second one. <laughs> now, the, uh, the movie stars uh, Daniel Craig. Uh, he fights aliens with a high-tech bracelet. And he doesn't know how he got it. He just wakes up one morning with a bracelet on his wrist. It's like a, it's like a Wild West version of Lindsay Lohan. He's like... Hey, is pretty good. I, I like him. But if I was casting James Bond in an alien movie, I'd want Sean Connery, because I can do him. <laughs> good luck to any little green bash nerd that tries to probe my ash. <laughs> no, seriously, good luck to him. I want him to succeed. Now, Cowboys and Aliens, of course, is based on a graphic novel. A graphic novel is a term used by geeks who don't want you to know they still read comic books. Uh, they kind of they're, they're soften it a bit. It's like when ladies say they're going to powder their nose. They're being polite. They would never say, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to drop a deuce. Wouldn't, that wouldn't be what... <laughs> that, I've gone too far, haven't I? I've gone too far. I realise that. I apologise. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about the, the Cowboys and Aliens. The movie takes place in Arizona, which is weird. Who'd have thought people in Arizona would have a problem with aliens? And it takes place... <laughs> it takes place in the town of Absolution. Absolution, Arizona is not a real town. It's fictional. But in the southwest, there's full of towns with very odd names like that. There's uh, Truth or Consequences in New Mexico, uh, Mule Shoe, which is in Texas, um, <laughs> Taint Knuckle Junction. <laughs> yeah, Taint Knuckle Junction, yeah. Uh, I can't remember what state it's in. I can't put my finger on it. Uh, it's uh, Taint Knuckle Junction. It, it, somewhere between... <laughs> it's somewhere between Grand Junction and Jackson Hole. Somewhere in there. 
Anyway, I... Oh, lighten up, man. It's Friday. I haven't seen... I haven't seen many clips of the Cowboys and Aliens movie, but I bet there's a scene where a cowboy uses a lasso to bring down an alien ship. Because what other weapons do the cowboys have? They have lassos and six-shooters and whiskey. <laughs> Maybe whiskey would work better than a lasso. You just, you, I'd love to see them feed E.T. whiskey. That'd be awesome. <laughs> E.T. for now. <laughs> E.T. drunk text ex-girlfriend. <laughs> If aliens ever do land on Earth, we should be friendly towards them, I think, because if they've mastered space travel, they've probably got the, you know, technology to make us their bitches. <laughs> when they demand to see our leader, our best chance of survival is taking them to see Lady Gaga. <laughs> I think they'd be impressed. They'd be like, we have misjudged the humans. We are far more similar than we thought. Ooh, I love the meat dress. Are you an alien? Is that code? <laughs> no, it's not code. Are you an alien? Are you? I mean, you're a robot skeleton. Are you from another world? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Which world are you from? Um, uh, Bone Lick, Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas, really? I didn't have you down as someone from Arkansas, yeah, you've Jeff. Never, you're you've from Arkansas, eh? Hey? You got a little place Lake in Arkansas? Yeah, I got a you place, like place there. Like throw pizza, pizza, people, pizza, people, pizza, 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 <laughs> no, I, I don't have a meat dress. Well, let's do it after the show. No, well, do what? Put on a meat dress. What the hell's wrong with you people? Sick. You're all sick. Don't yell at the audience. They're, you know, they're poorly enough paid as it is. <laughs> you want to, uh... Oh, yeah, sure, um, sure. Uh, let's see. Tonight's show is brought to you by uh, a big summer movie called uh, Wispy Farty. <laughs> he's classy, he's gassy, he's your best friend. I do the... <laughs> See? I don't know what it is, man. You, you got, you, it's almost like you have a frog in your throat. It's like we're back in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did? Yeah, See what I did? Yeah, you're the man. <laughs> Late night show, sidekick, that's what we do. Hey, you know hey, you know, hey, know. We're going down in flames. <laughs> what? No, 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 I had a frog in my throat. <laughs> it's like we were in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> You're going down in flames. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do the thing, Jeff. Fire up the Tweety Box, partner. We're going mining for comedy gold. <laughs> Where is the thing with all the tweets? <laughs> you and your friends stay in touch, but never meet. Tell me how 
Mode. As mode. All right. This is from Richard in Charleston in South Carolina. Richard says, uh, Dear Craig, Jeff, and Secretariat, who's that at the door? <laughs> oh man, I love yeah, that. Yeah, the horse came up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's good nah, stuff. Nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. It's the horse. <laughs> The horse was good in Paris. You know, really I, good. I was worried that when we were in Paris, though, that the horse was going to be in trouble because, you know, they eat horse meat in France. Ooh la la. <laughs> you know, that horse reminds me of a Western I think we should work on together. All right, well... It's called... It's called the Bone Ranger. <laughs> and, then, and then I would say, I owe Secretariat, I'm gay. <laughs> Oh, oh, I nearly, oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No. Uh. <laughs> Two times secretary I came out? Uh, no, what do you think? I didn't know it was two times. What the hell is with this guy? He tells him, can't you count? Well, yeah, you think I don't know how many times? He's been out, he's been out two times. I get it. Two like, times, secretary that's how the show works. I, I go, I go, secretary. Two, he comes uh, out. Go get that play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take that, whoever the hell we're angry at. We don't have any time for treats. We're out of time. We're completely out of time. We brought the horse out twice, and then, you know, old mama bear over there gave us a hard time, so we're screwed. That's, it. That's what I called you, mama bear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking of a dirty hibernation reference. Something about hibernating. <laughs> See, because you said bear, and oh, hell. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. We didn't get any tweets or emails done today, but we did. Rock it. Around a bit. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. You know my next guest uh, from the show Project Runway, which is the best show on television. <laughs> it airs Thursdays on Lifetime. He's also in the new film, The Smurfs. Maybe. <laughs> I didn't know that, actually. I should probably read the research. <laughs> then I think to myself, why? <laughs> it would ruin the surprise. <laughs> but he's in The Smurfs, apparently, which is in theaters now. Take a look at this. Please welcome the lovely Tim Gunn, everybody. Well, Tim, I did not know you were in the movies now. I, I am a little tiny... Little tiny part. Little no, but it's best. nice. It's it's, that's how you start off. You start in a little tiny part and you build your way up to <laughs> Iron Man 3. <laughs> no, not I. I'm not we, an actor. Well, why not? I think it's a good idea. <laughs> no, once the Project Runway thing runs its course, another four or five seasons, then move on. Maybe a sitcom, Two and a Half Men. They're always shuffling that thing uh, around. It'll be more like Two and a Half Grandpas. Oh, thanks. stop it. Now, it's your birthday it's today. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. I'll give you a dollar 
And a highlighting pen. <laughs> and a little squirt of sanitizer. <laughs> How wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't have any sanitizer. Oh, there you go. You ready? There you go. There you go. Thank you. There you go, and there's your dollar and your pen. I, actually, I should have put these away first and then used the sanitizer. Well, I don't know. You, I mean, you can have another squirt of sanitizer. <laughs> we'll, well, let's see how you do. Uh, we'll see how I do. So, have you any big plans for your birthday? I'm here with you. Ah, uh, that's the biggest plan. No, No, that's the terrible plan. No, what, what better plan could there be? Well, I don't Greg know. Ferguson. Do you celebrate birthdays? Are you, uh, mm, not no. really? No. I mean, after you turn 50 a couple of times, you think... <laughs> Why what should are you I keep talking doing about, this? man? I had to put you at about 37. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on 106. No, you are not. So, listen, uh, the Smurf movie, that's all well and good, but let's talk about Project Runway. Yes. yes. Now, any meat dresses this year or anything like that? Well, fortunately, we are fur and meat free on Project Runway. Ah, so no. I see. But no do not meat applaud that. <laughs> You, no, you, you, you don't use... Oh, no, of course you wouldn't use fur, but I didn't think it would be fur, but maybe meat in the Lady Gaga sense, meat that's already prepared. Did anyone use... really like that get-up? No. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I think everyone thought it was more kind of a, a piece of, you know, art than a piece of fashion. I mean, no one was seriously thinking they would go to the store and get a meat pants but can or anything you like that. wearing it? I mean, I'm thinking about flies. I'm thinking about odor. I'm thinking about <laughs> comfort. It's yes. just nauseating, the entire concept. I mean, you're wearing steak tartare, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of France. Oh, yes, of course, France. We, we're going there next week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we, went, we recorded the shows there in France. So you I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see. Well, it's, it's, very, it's exciting stuff, full of French people and hats and uh, berets and... Uh, <laughs> Do you, have you spent a lot of time in Paris? I, I have been. I mean, but when I was at Parsons School of Design for many years, mm -hmm. in my associate dean role, one of my charges was our Paris campus. We were the first American college uh -huh. to found a campus abroad, and that was in Paris in 1920. 1920? 1920. In fact, it was... Well, you, when you think... You about, are older than you I are. am. I am. I told you. When you think about American design, so much of our influence really came from Europe. Yes. And when Parsons was founded in 1896 and then opened this campus in 1920, it was required that each student spend at least a year at the Paris campus. Do you think the French are as fashion forward as they were at the turn of the century? And oh. I'm talking the other century, like, you know, they, uh, the... You know, the uh, 20th century. Yeah, yeah, that one. Regrettably, yes. Oh, you think they are? Regrettably. Really? Yeah, all right. I say that because... You don't, you're not a huge fan of French uh, well, designers, though, I, are you? I'm... I'm... Uh, no. <laughs> you like the Italians more? You like I the... do. I like, I like things that are a little more real world. I mean, Paris Couture Week, it's like going to Barnum and, and Bailey. I mean, yeah. it's, it really is a circus. Yeah. But you know what's really amazing? In the 1960s, there were more than 200 couture houses in Paris, and now I believe there's seven or eight. Oh, that says Lord. a lot. Where do you go for a stupid hat? <laughs> well, the good news is there are not very many places left to go to. Right. Well, that, well, yeah. I mean, but these things don't. Isn't there a, like a couture when they do the? Well, they do the outlandish shows when, yes. they, when the stuff is really over the top. No one is seriously suggesting that people will wear that. It's about you know, it's I, conceptual. It's like a concept car. A car I have. To, I don't know. I think the French take themselves very seriously, oh, and yes, I actually they do. do think that yes, there's an do. audience out there for that. You know, it does wear you down. I got. I am. I'm a huge Francophile. I, I love France. I love Paris. But I, we were there for about four or five days, and I was like, this route is wearing me down. Well, when, when I would travel for work, mm. I would have to do things like occasionally go to a bank or a post office, and I would come back feeling brutally beaten. Yeah. And my colleagues who were Parisians would say, don't worry about it, we all hate each other. Yeah. And I thought, what kind of a way is this to live? I think it's because they enjoy the architecture and the food so much they feel they should introduce something negative into the environment. <laughs> well, that could be. No, it's, it, it does wear you down. But it's bad it. karma. Yeah, it is, I agree. We're out of time already, I can hardly believe it. But the good news is you get to go off and enjoy your birthday. And would you like to do it with a mouth organ, an awkward pause, or a touch my glittery ball? <laughs> now, I have to warn you, touch my glittery ball hasn't really been thought through. I will take the awkward pause, ah, Greg. awkward pause. Oh, because you're acting now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because I want to stay away from the other two. It's, it's the uh, lesser of the evils. 
I don't know. Mouth organ's pretty... Uh... Uh, I'm staying away from that. All right, then. And I'm certainly staying away from the glitter glittery balls. It only leads to heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're having a quick awkward pause, then. Well, you're doing a thinking awkward pause. That's... I oh, this doing... is really awkward? So it should be really awkward. Well, I'll do, smell, in... I'll do smell my finger awkward pause. That usually helps. But if I smell more than one finger? Awkward and impressive. <laughs> you are, in fact, making it work. <laughs> Good going, everybody. Great when we're right back. My next guest is in a television show that I've never seen. It's my favorite. I thought Project Runway was your favorite. Well, that's when I'm experimenting. Uh, Anyway, he's in uh, Doctor Who. The Series 6 returns August 27th. The Series 6 Part 1 is available on DVD now. Take a look at this. <laughs> Please welcome Matt Smith. Everyone, Matt Smith. Yeah. Uh, Matt. Hello. Matthew, man, how are you? I'm dear? very well, thank you, dear. How are you? Well, you know, I mustn't grumble. Absolutely. No. Listen, thank you for having me back. Well, it's very nice to see you again. I know that you've been in uh, Comic Con last week because I, have. I believe some people of the geek persuasion enjoy the Doctor Who. Indeed, yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, <clears throat> now, it's doing very well in America, Doctor Who, isn't it? Isn't Do you it? know, it, it, it's really gathering a pace. It, because it's a very good show. Yes, I like to think so. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> I think it's doing very well, and I think that the idea of you going down to Comic-Con and meeting... How many people were there? <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's something like 100,000 descend on there. But, you know, kind of there was this lovely moment where uh, uh, me and Karen, who plays, who's coming on very soon. She's on the show uh, earlier in the week. Previously. <laughs> yeah. Who has been on the yeah, show previously. Yeah. Apparently, Karen was on the show. She was. Oh, she was wow. on earlier in the week. Fantastic. It's like an episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> anyway, I had a really boring story about people that were dressed up as us, but... Um, no, that's good. I usurped it by getting the dates wrong. No, no, it's all right. You didn't get the dates wrong. You got the dates different. It's mm. the Doctor we're talking about here. It's fine. Yes, exactly. If you had to describe the show to an American who had never seen it... What would you say? It's about a man who uh, time travels through the universe, saving uh, different races that live on, on sort of different planets, uh, and, and, and sort of sweeps up hot companions and, and takes them on the way. How would you describe it? <laughs> I would describe it in the form of a song. <laughs> OK, shall I beatbox? Yes! OK. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> My homie man is Doctor Who, and he goes from a planet that talks to you. He comes down and sweeps out your hot companion and takes them off to a place in your area. <laughs> I, I think... Massive. Yeah. Two things. Yeah. We may have been busted as white dudes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and we will never be in a hip-hop outfit. Never say never. Do you, enjoy, do you enjoy the hip hop? Oh man, that's what I grew up on. Really? Nas, Illmatic, the greatest rap in my top three albums. Right. You like the punk, right? I do like the punk. Yeah, I like the I... rap. I mean, I love a bit of punk as well, but rap music. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it was a huge passion of mine. Well, well, who is uh, what the uh, who are we talking about here? Nas, Illmatic, Stillmatic, uh, the first two Eminem albums. I think I think are well, quite, yeah, no, quite that's marvelous. An explosion of genius that is. When yeah. Eminem started, I was like, wait a minute, because I thought you know I'm a middle-aged white guy. This is not for me. And then the, I heard Eminem, and I'm like, actually, this is spectacular. Yeah. That reminded me of Iggy, that kind of energy. You know, Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop, of course, yeah, man. Ah, like I'm that. Going, yeah. Do you know that um, Seamus Heaney was asked who, who he thought one of the great poets of, of uh, the 20th century was, and he mm. said, Eminem. 
Really? Did yeah. you say that? He did indeed. Uh, 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 but I've, I, I must continue. <laughs> I must continue. Um, uh, see, because I'm East Coast, not West Coast. Biggie, not Tupac. Sorry, man. We're, we're going to need some security. But listen, <laughs> uh, I yeah. love Tupac. Don't get me wrong, I yeah, love yeah, Tupac. Yeah, Machiavelli. Don't, don't, I don't want to hear any more. Yeah. Man. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's move along. Let's get back to your little Doctor Who thing. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's doing very well. The one really film, I think. A nice, a nice Doctor. Oh, Who. Doctor Who film. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think one day, I think these things take a long time, and they'll probably cast Johnny Depp. I'll probably be dead or something by then. <laughs> I don't see. I don't see. I think Americans would would, re, would reject a British Doctor Who in the same way they would reject a, uh, a an American Sherlock Holmes. Oh wait, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, <laughs> fine actor though. Yeah, fine actor, and he does do a British accent in it. He does do a very yeah British yeah. Accent. He, he's Can you do brilliant. an American accent? I can. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> I think, I mean, like, you know, I can try. Is that okay? Is, uh, yeah, you know. Uh, 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 I, don't, I don't know. No? I, I, well, I'm not a very good uh, judge. Can you do one? Uh, no. No, uh, <laughs> this is me doing an American accent right now. <laughs> this is, uh, but when I go back to Scotland, they're like, oh, do you hear him talking with his American accent? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an American accent. They're like, oh, yes, you do. Look at you. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> They get very cross at me. Jeff has an American accent. Jeff. Exterminate! Exterminate! <laughs> Jeff. You know, I saw Kristen on the show. Kristen Bell? Yeah. yeah. Wow. She, wow. Well, she's very lovely. And, and, um, and, you know, I saw how you two were sort of clashing. They don't get along. Tell me about that, Jeff. I don't care to. <laughs> I don't know, I think there's some kind of professional jealousy. Kristen has always been my favourite guest, until you were here, of course, Matt. And, yes, uh, yes. and Jeff, I think, feels slightly threatened by that. I think it's a kind of... Jeff, uh, you shouldn't, man. I mean, you've got a cool haircut, your eyes are groovy, you've got a name badge. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he's not lying to you, Jeff. You do have a lot of things going. You've got your beads there. The beads are really groovy. You've got a funny, bony hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing after the show? Yeah. <laughs> Hey. Are you living here now then? Are you living in, Oh, you can't live in America. No, you make Doctor Who in I've got to go and make more Doctor Who, but um uh yeah, I'm just here to see you, man. No, come on. You've been here for a while, haven't you? Yeah, I I, I mean, I was here for like 5 weeks sort of uh... Oh yeah, because I gave you my phone number, you never called me. Yeah, I remember that. No. Did you get my message though? Did you get my message? I did get a yeah. message, yeah. Me sorry about that. No, and then no, I felt really right, embarrassed right. and I was like, "Oh no," because then I and then I was telling him, "Wow, I got I got Craig Ferguson's phone number." I told my girlfriend, I showed her it. Yeah? Uh, and then I didn't call you. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Do you know the, weird, the saddest thing about that is, though, that when they told me that you had, you know, like, you were embarrassed and you'd lost the number, I was like, I had never expected you to call me. Really? Because, no, when you meet actors and they go, oh, uh, give me your number, we'll give you a call, you give me your number, you never hear from them again. Yeah, is this, like, men post-flirting? Is this what we're doing? Are we sort of, like, saying... <laughs> so, yeah, it was good when we got together, but, um... I don't know, man, I'm, yeah. I'm beginning to feel kind of awkward right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> This is an organic, awkward pause. Yeah, it's, it's like the awkward pause has shifted through the space-time continuum yeah. in the middle of the discussion as opposed to at the end. It's like time and space have gone nuts. And it's actually really awkward because it's genuinely awkward. Yeah. Tutsi frutsi. <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. No, oh, keep going. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. He likes a bit of awkward. I, uh, I don't, not so much. What about a play or something? To, now? Yeah. No, uh, I no, mean, to, for me yeah. to do a play. Oh, do you, I'd do love you, to. You've got you to branch out and, and not just do Doctor Who. You've got to do other Yes, stuff. I mean, yeah. I kind of, that's where I began. In the British In the theatre, theater, yes. Did you, you ever know. wear tights and have a pointy sword? No, because I never did a Shakespeare play, <laughs> Oh, that's terribly sad. Um, uh, yeah, I did all modern plays, but I'd love to. I just don't get the right amount of break between uh, shooting who, because I only get three months Is that off. what you call it when you work on it? Who? Who, yeah. Yeah. yeah Gotta yeah, go and shoot who. some who. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And kind of, if you write it in a text, you always write it in capitals. Who? Yeah, you just put, yeah. oh, no, I can't, I'm doing who. Oh, <laughs> that would be, that would be if you were texting someone whose number you had who you didn't text. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and here we are again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've decided I want to be in Doctor Who. Or who. Yeah.
I've I've decided I want to make that happen too. And guess I who's wanna... here? The executive producers are backstage. <laughs> and Moffat's coming over. He'd make a great villain, right? I a think... great new villain. I think I could really be very frightening. I think so too. I mate. could be yeah, very frightening. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could, uh, I could hoo you. I could, you know, I mean, I'd be right. I'd be like, hey. And a fine actor. First no, time. no, well, let's not overdo it, mate. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's the plan, right? Next season, we're going to Next try and season, get... I'll get over at Wales while I'll ditch this. <laughs> Although, we were having a conversation about this, and apparently you don't get much time off. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're doing, like... Because you do this every day, right? Yeah, but you put me in Doctor Who. I'll... I don't quit there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, no, man. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, we're, we're done, man. We've done the awkward pause. You're going to have to do mouth organ or glittery ball. Don't do glittery ball. Mouth organ. <laughs> what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang, hang on. What is the ball? <laughs> Am I missing out on something? Does it all go psychedelic and strange? <laughs> Give me a mouth organ, bro. Yeah, all right. There you go. Thank you, sir. All right, let's hit the high notes. That's what sure. Jeff loves. Okay. <laughs> Where is... Can you play? No. Okay. <laughs> If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059 or visit oneiota.com. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? Yeah! Well, I was surprised to notice that when I went backstage that uh, Tori Bellici from the Mythbusters was here hitting on my leprechaun. <laughs> He's very handsome. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't, you don't hit on another man's leprechaun. He's got a pot of gold, you do. He's got a pot of gold. Is pot of gold code? Could be. <laughs> My apologies to Ted Alexandro, who is the stand-up comedian. A very funny stand-up comedian. He was meant to be on the show tonight, but apparently there's too much geek energy in the room to allow anything else to happen. Um, were, you, were you at Comic-Con? Yeah, we were. Yeah. Yeah. Was together? <laughs> no, you well, <laughs> That's where I found him. Yeah? Yeah. Were you at Comic-Con? I was trying to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't gotten one yet. Yeah, you could be on Doctor Who as the evil leprechaun. Hey, I like that idea. <laughs> Where's this guy from? I, I think it's Pakistan or something <laughs> yeah. like that. He's got, he's got a I weird accent. Very much. He's, he's got a very weird accent. Yeah, you have got a very weird accent. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.